Hey, what's up? Joe here. Um, one week ago today, is that right? Yesterday, I had open heart surgery. And um, I just thought I would say hello to everybody and give you all a quick update. Talk about some things that I'm really grateful for and things that I'm hoping you are grateful to for as well. Share some a lot of business things I've been thinking about lately and some personal finances and stuff like that that I've been thinking about. Um, hopefully this can encourage some of you guys as well. Um, so for the last couple, three months, I've had these heart palpitations where my heart will flutter, beat fast or something. And, um, then I'll start feeling a little dizzy and I've just kind of knew something was wrong, but it always got worse when I would drink a lot of coffee. So I stopped drinking coffee, got better. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, I, I, this last early summer, early spring, I was been, been traveling a lot. I was in Puerto Rico, hanging out with a good friend. And um, it's just started getting bad. So I got back home and then my family went to Austin, Texas. And um, I started, I told my wife for the first time, I'm having these palpitations. And so she um, uh, got me to finally call a doctor and schedule an appointment for when we got back to St. Louis from Austin. <clears throat> so, um, well, I better make this short because it's hard to talk. Anyway, uh, so I called urgent. I called the doctor in St. Louis, and they said you need to go to urgent care right away. So we did, and the uh, urgent care doctor kind of freaked out. Said, "This isn't good." They did an EKG on me. Um, I'm going to handcuff you to this bed and send you to the emergency room unless I can get a cardiologist to um, <clears throat> look at you tomorrow. Because you couldn't tell from looking at me that I was sick. My heart was bad. So um, the next day, we went to see a cardiologist. He said, yeah, oh my gosh, this is really bad. You have a very, very bad aorta valve, which is your main valve that lets the blood pump in and out of your heart. Well, it pumps it from, I'm not sure how it works. I need to do some more research on it. it pumps the blood out to your body. So my valve wasn't opening and closing at all properly. And um, he said, this is very, very uncommon. Um, he said that you got to get this taken care of right away. So he actually let us, he made me, we had to cancel our flight back to St. Louis, but he let us drive because again, I wasn't, you couldn't tell from looking at me unless I told you I was having these little heart palpitations. I've been having them for a few months and actually I've been having them off and on very rarely for a couple of years or more. But um, again, I thought it was coffee related, stress related. And uh, when I do some deep breathing exercises, it helped and all of that. Well, he said, when you get back to St. Louis, you need to go uh, just check yourself into the emergency room at a good hospital. And um, <clears throat> he said, you could do it in St. Louis, in Austin, Texas, if you want. But if you want to be closer to family and friends, you should do it in St. Louis. Um, so he actually knew of some good hospitals in St. Louis. And um, so Friday night, a week and a half ago, I checked in almost two weeks ago tomorrow. I checked into a emergency room on a Friday night at like 7.30 at night. And um, they were really, really busy. I guess Friday night is not the good, the best time to go. Um, so, you know, within about, well, the, by that next morning, I had seen a bunch of doctors. They did an, um, an echogram on me, my second echogram. And they said, this is really bad. You need to go and do surgery immediately. So I'm kind of freaking out. And um, so fast forward then three or four days, I had my open heart surgery. I mean, not like where they cut into maybe your shoulder or your wrist and go into your heart. Like I have a big old manly scar on my chest. They full open heart surgery, went in and replaced my aorta valve. <clears throat> I think it's this big, I don't know, with uh, cow tissue tissue from a cow. And um, so three days later, after that surgery, I went home. And that's it. It's, it was just, I mean, a total miracle how everything happened. Um, I'm, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm in a lot of pain, but I'm feeling really, really good. Um, you see these things, those aren't bug bites. Those are like, I had could not believe how many probes and things they stuck in me like all over I don't want to talk about it. 
but I'm so grateful for the doctors took really, really good care of me, um, took care of my family. I have so many friends. So I wanted to share a few things with you. Hopefully this isn't too long. Um, I'm super grateful for my family, especially my wife and my kids. Been amazing and supportive. My family from out of town. Um, and then our friends here in St. Louis. Oh my gosh. You know, if I, I don't know where you live, obviously, and I, I don't know what kind of friends or network you have. But man, if you don't have good friends, get you some. If you don't have a family, get you some. Like, if you don't have, if you don't go to a good church, get, get go find a good church, plug into a community. They have been so awesome and supportive. Like, my 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 hospital room looked like a florist shop. I had so many flowers in there. The overwhelming support from you know, texting and phone calls to my wife on Facebook, um, Instagram, the the things we got in the mail here at home, like just, it would blow you away. And I'm so, so humbled and grateful by that. But that really pulled me through. Like, it was discouraging. It was like the dark night of the soul, as they say. It was dark. It was like, how and why is this happening to me? I'm 49 years old. Um, this isn't supposed to happen to a guy that's young and healthy like me. So it was very easy to slip into a pity party. And um, so it was just amazing. And I, I just wanted to tell you all, again, if you don't have really good friends, go find some. Like, go join a local church. If you're in St. Louis, come join my church. It's called St. Louis Family Church. Just Google it, St. Louis Family Church. It's in Chesterfield. It's an amazing church, amazing pastors. Just love my church. I love my family from church. So, you know, also as I was getting ready for surgery, you know, you think a lot about, well, what if I don't come out? You think a lot about death. Um, But I felt I was never scared, man, never once, because I know where I'm going, and it would have been better, like not better in, in the... I would have missed my family, you know, maybe. But like, you know what I'm saying? It felt good to have assurance and confidence. And I don't know where you guys are at watching this, where you are spiritually in your belief with God and all that. But man, it's better just figure that out before you die. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so I've been home for a few days now in recovery. Um... I just love being home and uh, I've been taking it easy. It's been about a week, like I said, and I wrote down some things that I've been thinking a lot about from a business perspective and also personal financial perspective. Um, In business, guys, this is important. If you don't have recurring revenue or if you don't have cash flow, you don't have a real business because I haven't been able to work for the last two weeks. And um, I'm probably not going to be able to work much for the next couple of months. Every, I hear different things, you know. I'm kind of anxious and ready to go to get back to work, but it's hard to talk. I'm trying to get my voice back because they, like, cut my scar starts right here. I'd show it to you. I know you really want to see it. But, you know, so it's been, it's hard. Um, but, it be, you know, I'm my business isn't where I want it to be yet, but it's, a lot closer than it was a year or two ago when I started thinking about recurring revenue. I started thinking about cash flow. Because what's going to happen to you if you get sick and you can't work? Um, you get disabled. You have a car accident. How are you going to survive? So there's two things that are really, really critical and important. And I've learned this in my business. And I've, I've been doing it, but I'm understanding why it was so important. I'm so glad I listened to the people around me that told me this is important. Number one... Um, you've got to have recurring revenue or cash flow in your business. If you don't have recurring revenue, you don't have a good business. Number two, you got to have a good team. My team is amazing. They've stepped up to the plate. They've like said, Joe, don't even think about work for the next three months. We've got this whole thing covered. We've got, and so I've talked to them by text a little bit, um, by phone once or twice in the last two or three weeks. Um, my team is amazing and I'm just so grateful for them and pulling them up or pulling me up through this and um 
start thinking about that for you and your business, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, think about this. Like, you know, let's say you don't have a business yet. You have a job. Do you have disability income? You know, I do. Um, if something were to happen to me, I have disability income that, that could cover me. It's not cheap, but what really is my safety net is recurring revenue right now, pr- just to be open and honest, probably 50% of my, um, operating expense, my salaries, my team, and all of that. About half of that is covered with recurring revenue. I get recurring revenue from a lot of different sources, from affiliate income, from um, some from deals, um, from different products I've sold on like a monthly recurring basis. So it's about half of where I need it to be. So my number one goal as I get back into the swing of things is to build that recurring revenue back up to where I want it to be. My personal goal is to get, um, depending on how you look at the numbers, well, I I won't share them, but um, because they're different for everybody, right? You got to be aware of that. And then the other thing is, again, like I said, the amazing team. Make sure you hire A players. Um, And sometimes you have to pay premium to get the best people, but it's worth it every single time. Um, So always hire the best people. The third thing I've been thinking about, being grateful for my family and friends, thinking about business, also thinking about personal finances. Um, I'm on fire now more than ever to get out of debt. Like, <clears throat> you know, we've got little things here and there, but my house specifically, um, I want this house paid off. And I'm going to have it as an aggressive goal to pay this house off in the next 12 months. And it's it's a it's a very big audacious hairy audacious goal a BHAG, but I know if I put my mind to it, um, we can do it. And so for me, I want to get my financial house in order, because again, what happens if this this cow tissue valve doesn't work? It stops working. Like I don't want to leave, you know, this mortgage payment on my family. Now I have term life insurance. That will cover me and all of that. They'll be able to pay the house off with the insurance. But, man, I don't care. You could show me till you're blue in the face all of the spreadsheets that show it's foolish to pay your mortgage off soon. It's it's when you're paying 3% interest on debt, that is not bad. You could you, And you would be right. You'd be completely right. I understand how you could... You, you, you're, you're paying 3% on money, but you could be earning... 8%, 10%, 20% with that same money somewhere else. I get it. But when it comes to peace of mind and security, um, yeah, I'm on a I'm on a mission to pay my mortgage off as soon as possible. And to get my financial house in order, it is pretty good, you know, I think. But that's the problem. Like, I think it is. What if I would have died? Yeah, it's, it's like freaky to think about. Um, so... I do feel grateful that I have really good life insurance and health insurance. Um, I pay a lot of money. So I've been self-employed since 2009. And um, I've tried the cheaper insurances, but um, it's just frustrating with all the paperwork. And I just didn't like working with them. You know, like the, I don't want to mention names, but there's, there's cheaper free versions of health insurance that you can get. That's not with the regular insurance. You know what I mean? Um, so we have really good health insurance that I've paid a lot of money um, for a long, long time on. And I'm so glad I have that because I just I don't have to worry about these expenses. I do have a large deductible that I have to pay. but um, And I'm also really grateful for the term life insurance that I have. Now, whole life term, you know, whatever. Um, but I've, I've, my whole point is this. You need to look at yourself and your family, your situation, but do you have... Ask yourself this question. Do you have good life insurance? And do you um, have good health insurance? It sucks to pay as much as health insurance costs. I mean, I remember looking at the numbers. um, Well, I was going to get into politics, but (laughs) I pay a lot of money insurance. Um, The other thing, okay, I want to, sorry, this is so long. Um, I'm real surprised if any of you are still watching this. I appreciate that, though. I really do. Um... One of the things that I realized I didn't have that I worked a lot on before the surgery in case I did die 
was getting all of my personal bank account information, passwords to my phone, passwords to my emails. I have a password manager. I have passwords of my passwords. You know what I mean? Um, you know, the settings on your phone. Like if you were to die, could your family get into your phone? Could, uh, like, we have parental controls on our kids' phones. My wife doesn't know how to get into the parental controls. I mean, so, like, all of that stuff I wrote down um, on a on a, um, uh, Apple Note, actually, and I shared it with her, and I also shared it with my oldest son, who's 19. Um, and so, like, those things you got to think about. If you were to die, do, does your family know where the will is and the, and the life insurance policies? Do they know how to log into your computer and your phone? They know how to get into the bank accounts, into the Gmail, your Yahoo um, email accounts. They know how to get into the phone settings if you have parental controls on your phones. Like there's there's a dozen things you got to think about that you better make sure your family knows how to to get in too. All right, so this video is 10 minutes longer than I thought it would be. Hopefully Facebook and YouTube let me upload it. Appreciate you all. I really am grateful for you. Um, whether you're a friend, a family member, somebody who just follows me for business stuff, um, yeah, you've not seen the last of me. Um, I appreciate you all. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.